Okay, um, thanks very much and um, thank you for your patience. We're going to move on now to our final keynote address. Um, if you just want to draw your conversations to a close, we're going to move on now to our final keynote address. And we're absolutely thrilled that we have Professor Joanna Madalinska Michalak uh, from the University of Warsaw, who's come over especially for this conference. Um, I've worked a little bit with, with Joanna, um, but my colleague Connor Galvin has uh, worked for many years with Joanna and knows her much better than I do. So I thought it was only appropriate that Connor should introduce the conference to Joanna. So Connor, thank you. Thanks very much, Noel. Thank you for that, that kind introduction. Uh, it's it's, an, it's a, a pleasure and a privilege to introduce my colleague, uh, my work associate and my friend, uh, Professor Joanna Madalinska michalak to the conference. Um, she has heard a little bit about Skotens down the years, but never really knew much about us. So that's the origins of the invitation. What can I say about her? She's a full professor of social science in the University of Warsaw, which is unusual within itself. Um, she's education, education research is her, her core focus and framed area. She's based in the Faculty of Education. Um, she's a distinguished professor within the university. As I say, it's an unusual standing and it's, it's a great honor. She's also an honorary professor in the University of Aarhus in Denmark. And she heads various didactic and teacher education committees and scientific boards within Poland. Again, this is a little bit unusual for somebody who comes from the education and social sciences background. But um, she's... she's I think she's earned her place at all of these tables and has um, a long history of interest in teachers, teacher education, education leadership, education policy at the national and at the European level. So um, a number of her key publications have actually been at the European level. So she's currently the editor of a book series from the uh, Brill um, Publishing House which is entitled Key Issues in Teacher Education, Research, Policy and Practice. And that's in a sense where we've, we've, we've bumped into her quite, quite recently in terms of papers from the island of Ireland. Joanna's invited to keynote very widely um, and she gives the, the, uh, you know, the, the, the full sort of traditional keynote very often, which is why what I've asked her to do for this conference has proved a bit of a challenge. And, I'll say a tiny bit more before she speaks. So she has served on various global, international, and um, um, uh, scientific boards and education boards. She's been the vice president of the Association of International Educators. She's a member of the board of directors of the ISET for, since 2017. She's on the council of the European Education Research Association as the Polish representative and in her own right. Um, and that's the, or that's the group that organizes ESER for those of us who travel to, to that particular conference. She's been involved in NTEP, which is the European Network of Teacher Education. She's a vice president of the World Federation um, of uh, Education Research Associations. The list kind of goes on, and I, I could keep going on, but I, I would point to one perhaps um, other uh, distinguishing feature. She is, uh, has recently, as recently as 22, received the Institute de la Republica Award which again is a very high uh, uh, honour and a recognition of her services to education and to education policy down the years. And it's a medal that's awarded by the Polish um, Science Associations, the Scientific Research Bodies Associations. Okay, what's different about this one? I have asked her to think, yes, think about the traditional sort of keynote and all the rest, but this is a capstone. You've come to SCOTENS, you didn't know a whole lot about us initially, we introduced you to some of our writings, to some of our people. You did your, your readings in those spaces. Um, come to the conference and tell us what your experience has been. What impressions have you got of SCOTENS in advance? And then uh, subsequently, when you arrived at the conference, what has been your experience in terms of the, the, the atmosphere? And what sorts of thoughts and recommendations would you like to offer us as an organization facing into the next 20 years? So that was the almost impossible task that I set the good professor, um, and she very kindly agreed to, to take it on. Professor, the floor is yours. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, um, esteemed colleagues, dear friends, if I may. It's uh, both an honor and privilege to stand uh, before you today to share the view from abroad on the themes of hopes, dreams and possibilities within the scout terms. I extend uh, my heart, mm, heartfelt gratitude for the opportunity to deliver this keynote speech and I'm profoundly grateful to the Scotans Committee for the war warm welcome and hospitality. After this introduction of my achievement, person, uh, professional career, you know, uh, it's not easy to go on. <laughs> I need to breathe. <laughs> Hopefully, Connor was so kind and he uh, saved the time for us and also for me and he uh, was not so much keen on to point out all these achievements so if we are sitting and you know thinking about ourselves what is possible to do within our life sometimes we need to have a deep brief before the presentation so thank you again very much for this uh, invitation and I really agree that the mission was almost impossible but as a leader of different organization, I say, um, said to myself, if I receive such a lovely invitation, why I shouldn't say no? I should say yes. So um, today you will observe, let me say, my learning, what I have learned about uh, your organization and what I see, what might be important for you for the future. So um, as far as uh, my knowledge about Scotans is concerned. Um, I had some possibilities to, uh, let me say, to broaden my knowledge about this organization. And the first time when I've heard about your organization was ESER 2016, which I think is very important for the colleagues from uh, Ireland because uh, it was the European Conference of uh, Educational Research, uh, which was held um, at uh, UCD. Uh, and the title of the conference was Leading Education, the Distinct contribution of educational research and researchers. For me, the conference was also special because I had at that time honor to chair the, one of the central um, event. It was the keynote which was held by uh, Jurun Moller and you should believe me that I was even more um, afraid than now because the audience was more than 500 participants. And as a speaker from, uh, let me say, Poland, um, even though, you know, I can speak sometimes easily English, I know that it is not my, uh, the most, <laughs> let me say, um, it is my, the, that it is my strongest uh, point. And the audience was talkative. I said to them, may I have your attention, please? I repeat, and then it was such a peaceful atmosphere, quiet, you know, I can't, you can uh, hear the flyers and then I felt oh my goodness I would like to go away <laughs> but, <laughs> I have, <laughs> but I have to manage with that and it goes uh, it went uh, well so uh, during this conference you presented about your organization and then uh, I had the opportunity it was the first time when I met uh, I usually say professor Connor Galvin to encourage my friend to think about the future. So I met uh, Connor at uh, one of the Council uh, Educational, uh, European Educa Educational Research Association Council meeting. And we were talking about uh, your organization and for me it was really difficult to understand what uh, mm, you know is about the organization. Why? Because it is very unique organization. It is based on this cross uh, border um, cooperation and uh, um, it comprises uh, not the, um, let me say, individual memberships, but it's about the faculty of education, different units, units and it is uh, which uh, it's very good from my point of view. It is supported by the departments of education from both 
sides, north and south. So uh, it was, uh, yeah, this message was um, quite new for me. And then I participated in uh, at this American Educational Research Association 2018. It was held in New York, and at that, that time, still they printed the program. As you know, the program is very large, and I noticed that your um, colleagues, they present about this organization. And uh, um, I have some thought that it's a good um, opportunity also for my organization, Polish Educational Research Association, to present our achievement at such prestigious forum. So, uh, as you see, these initial thoughts, they were very, let me say, foggy. I, I know a little bit about the Scotans, and um, I can say that at that time, I understood Scotans as a conference that uh, uh, unites educators, researchers, policymakers from both North Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, based on collaboration and networking. And now, um, let me say it was the time of uh, this uh, lovely invitation. I received the invitation to uh, address this keynote from uh, both coaches, Dr. Maria Campbell and Dr. Gabriela Nick Wood here. Sorry, it's not properly said. And I felt deeply honored uh, to receive this invitation and to offer this keynote. And uh, as I mentioned, I said yes, but then, as you know, there are uh, very good beginnings. And then there is hard job. So I uh, look at the website, your website, and it is full of information, and it is very nice uh, design, so congratulations. And also I try as a researcher to uh, read some papers about uh, your organizations organization and uh, three of um, three of these papers they were public they were put in the repository of this American Educational Research Association but the paper that I would like uh, draw your attention to is the paper which is uh, published um, at very prestigious journal, journal Oxford Review of Education and the title of this paper is assessing the values of Scotans as a cross-border professional learning community in Ireland using the Vanger Trainer Value Creation uh, Framework. It is very uh, well, uh, let me say, written paper, and uh, I really, I think it's a lesson for you uh, to read this paper, not only for me, because it shouldn't but be so the situation that I, I will not know more than <laughs> you colleagues about your organization. And the paper was written by Linda Clark, Connor Galvin, and the other um, colleagues. And on the basis of these papers, I, uh, let me say, broaden my horizons, and I found uh, the Scotland's uh, value imperative, and uh, I found that uh, the organization is a profound and unique one, deeply rooted in the historical context of Nor Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, and the central mission of uh, your organization is twofold, reflecting its, uh, its distinct, distinct role and significance, and the primary motivation for creation of Scotans lies in the imperative of peace building, and I think the value of peace nowadays, uh, as usual, it's one of the most important value for everyone, but nowadays what we observe in the world and we are afraid about the future because of uh, time of uncertainty, uh, the time of crisis, we can say in this way, this value really should be uh, put in the center of any organization and any, uh, let me say, people consideration what we would like for the future. So um, I appreciate a lot your central mission of your organization. And uh, mm, the other motivation which is connected with the central mission of Scotans is about cross-border cooperation for educational enhancement. Scotans places a strong emphasis and its core mission of enhances of uh, teacher education uh, mm, 
in the region. Uh, so it underscores the value of education as a catalyst for positive change, as a means of building bridges between communities, contributing to a move uh, peaceful, equitable and prosperous future. So from all these papers, I found uh, the Scotland's value imperative as the most important uh, thing that helped me to look at the organization through the specific lenses. And now I'm going to offer you some observations that might be useful, helpful for you. Uh, and the, let me say that the, mm, the first things that strike me when I visited several times your website and with a pleasure really, I enjoy a lot your um, advert advertisement that it, uh, it is in the YouTube, the, the short, uh, let me say, movie about the organization. Uh, so um, I look at the different activities, different elements of the structure of organization and uh, among these activities, I think that uh, you should be proud as a, um, colleagues who gather around Scotans about the small scale uh, seed funded project, the John Kulahan Reward, the student teacher exchanges, annual conferences, the doctoral different uh, forms that you offer during the, these annual conferences. I mean the doctoral round table, these round tables that just finished the panel uh, discussion and so on. So um, please give me, give me a few minutes. I will uh, share my observation about these different um, activities. So. I found uh, especially interesting and important this small-scale seed-funded collaborative research project. I try to stress out the type of the project that you introduce and you try to uh, disseminate this kind of the project. They should be collaborative research project. And uh, from the website, we can learn that up to date, uh, we have uh, 100 26 um, research project that were founded. Connor said me yesterday, yesterday that uh, mm, almost there are 140 projects that were accepted. And uh, what is interesting about this project, mm, this project, mm, they have like three different dimensions. The first one is about the innovation at, and experimentation, fostering creativity and empowering educators. The first dimension, uh, I think, it's connected with the Scotland's support for small scale and seed funded project, and it reflects a commitment to innovation and experimentation in teacher education. This project, they offer educators and researchers the opportunity to explore new ideas, ap approaches and methods. Fostering creativity by providing seed funding, Scotland's nutritious creativity within the educational community. It encourages educators to think outside the box and develop projects that have the potential to address pressing challenges in education. And the third dimension that I uh, found in this project, um, I think that this project empower educators to take ownership of the ideas and initiatives. They enable educators to become active agents of change. If you think about this, uh, the first motif for uh, building scotens, I think this is very important to uh, perceive researchers as an agent of, of change to work for the peace in their world. And uh, this project, they contribute, thank you, to the uh, improvement of teacher education. And then if we will uh, look at the, the topics of the project, what uh, we can find, uh, mm, you can observe that there is a range of different topics, uh, uh, the diverse perspectives, uh, amazing topics that are really important for improving teacher education and for um, designing the future 
of teacher education. So this broad spectrum of topics covered by Scotans reflects the diverse pers perspectives and interests of the educational community. So you should be proud about your, mm, let me say, professional capital that you have, that you share among yourself. This project, as I mentioned, addresses issues ranging from pedagogy and curriculum development to teacher training and student engagement. And what is also interesting about this project, it's about the cross-disciplinary collaboration. It is an incredible range of topics that foster cross-disciplinary collaboration as educators and researchers from various fields come together to explore innovative solutions to complex educational challenges. And also I found in this project what is typical for, um, let me say, teach education that not only we do research, but we try to develop, improve practice, practical relevance of this project. So um, I think that, that my observation about this. And of course, this project as a main philosophy of organization, uh, they are based on a uh, north-south partnership application and uh, there are also focuses on involving new researchers to the project and to look at the current teacher education concern. Uh, in recognition of Professor John Kulahan's contribution to the foundation of Scotans, the John Kulahan Award was made to the authors of the seed founding reports. Uh, these reports that recognize, uh, that are recognized to be most in the line with the values of Scotland. So uh, I um, really appreciate, um, let me say, the coherence which is observable uh, in, your act, um, in your way, how you would like to perceive your organization. I had the privilege to meet uh, Professor John Kulahan, and yesterday we were surprised when we had, um, it was, sorry, two days ago, when we had the dinner together and we started to, do, to discuss, you know, our different experiences, and I said that I had the opportunity to visit St. Patrick College. Uh, in Dublin and uh, it was at the beginning of my career and I participated in the conference and uh, Colonel, he was so kind, he, let me say, did research and he said, Joanna, it was not 16 years ago, it was more than 20. Three years ago, 1990. Firstly, we thought that uh, it, mm, firstly, uh, Connor found that it was 1996, but it was 1991, so time is passing so much. And uh, nevertheless, it was my pleasure really to meet Professor, which is uh, the father uh, of education in your country, I think so. And uh, the other aspect of Scotland's work which is very, very important because it is about the capacity, bu capacity building, professional development and about the future. Uh, this aspect is connected with the student-teacher exchanges. And uh, as we know, the time is not easy for us and you introduce student-teacher exchanges in person and uh, the way in which it has developed was uh, really, um, it was great. And uh, also it emphasis put, um, the emphasis was put on north-south placement and uh, it was put also on um, cultural exchange. We learn because we travel, because we uh, have the opportunity uh, to be close to the different values and to see how people they live, how do they perceive education. And in this case, these student-teacher exchanges in person, uh, um, I can say that this kind of the mobility um, uh, help students and also te teacher educators foster rich cultural exchanges between uh, students and teacher educators from the North Northern, uh, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. So um, we should be happy that we are, let me now in the post-pandemic time. 
and uh, we can develop these uh, uh, student teacher exchange exchanges. But uh, what I found uh, very important that organization tried to, to do as much as possible and even though we had the time of the real crisis in the world you didn't uh, give up and you offered the students and the teacher these uh, virtual uh, exchanges and uh, i think it is a kind of a, of advantage and i have some suggestion for the future how you can use these uh, student teacher exchanges in the future um, the other very important activity of Scotans that I found is about Shirt Island, uh, Iceland, sorry, Scotans Research Partners Partnership. And I could say that it is a um, testament to the power of collaboration. It brings together researchers, educators, and institutions to undertake collaborative research projects. This partnership enhances knowledge and has the potential to inform uh, educational policy makers and decision makers. And it is not finally, but uh, we celebrate the situation here. I'm smiling that I'm here. Thank you. The Scotland's annual conference. I found this as a flagship event of uh, organization. Uh, this uh, annual conference stands at the heart of Scotland. The themes that are uh, mm, that we can, uh, you know, look. We can look at the themes of this annual conference, and uh, we see that uh, they provide a structure for ongoing dialogue and cooperation, and they are very carefully chosen by the organizers of these annual conferences. And the themes, they reflect the most pressing and relevant issues in the field of teacher education. And uh, I talk to Connor yesterday about these uh, annual conferences themes, and I ask about the theme from 2003, from the beginning, however, I think it's the, let me say, kind of the homework, uh, they're not still recorded and put at the website, so uh, you can see these different themes, 2013, 13, uh, it was the theme that really uh, it's important for me, learning, teaching, reimagining the profession, because what we can observe now in Europe, not only in Europe, uh, that uh, the status of teaching uh, is uh, diminishing, diminishing, it's uh, uh, going down. Uh, in Poland, we have the hope for the new government, we don't know, because the opposition parties, they won the election, but we are not sure about what will be in the future, but what was really um, um, unacceptable for us that the Ministry of Education in public, instead of uh, pointing out the positive aspects of teachers who work for the future for the education, he criticized publicly teachers. And it is the first time in our country that we observe from three years, the teacher shortage. Usually when I attended different conferences, I had this privilege that I could say that we have more teachers than we needed. We were able to select the teachers, the head teachers, they have the responsibility to recruit teachers. Though, so they have this opportunity really to invite the best in their own opinion to their own schools. Nowadays, they have to look for the teachers. Of course, when we look at the statistic, we see that it is around 3% of the teachers that uh, are, um, in, you know, that we should have in the profession. But if you look at the individual school, you see that it is a huge damage to the education. And our ministry, he is talking only in general that we have no problem with the teacher shortage. But we are afraid because if we, if such trend emerges, uh, we can have negative consequences. So uh, coming back to the 
uh, Scouten's annual conferences uh, theme. As I said, they are carefully chosen to reflect the most pressing and relevant issues in the field of teacher education. And um, the theme from this year, uh, it sets a, sets a positive and forward-looking tone for the conference. And I think now we are at the end of the conference, but you agree with me that the atmosphere was exceptionally friendly. And uh, mm, mm, thankfully to this atmosphere, especially young researchers, they have a very good opportunity opportunities to present the research uh, in uh, this uh, welcoming surrounding. So this is very good. And the theme conveys a sense of reflection, celebration, and forward-looking um, hope and optimism. And hopefully we still have uh, what I found that um, you work very carefully to select your keynote uh, speakers. And usually you have such keynote speakers who can, uh, uh, mm, that the speeches, they can provoke and inform, yes? So during our conference, Teresa Kremin used to remember her presentation about, uh, um, about the pleasure for, reading for pleasure and the implications and the research findings that she presented and Professor Ian Ma Mentor, who is with us, and yesterday keynote was very good, and for me personally as well, because Professor used the note, and I said, oh, if Professor can use, why not me? This is good, <laughs> because after the first presentation, I said, I should go home. <laughs> I was really like at the school. I was so much afraid, even though I love this presentation, and I think each of us uh, shared the same feeling. Uh, Another activity, uh, as you know, the Scouten's Doctoral Roundtable. Uh, Professor Connor invited me, Joanna. There is no obligation. You can do whatever you wish. But we start, uh, we will have these Doctoral Roundtables um, before the official opening of the conference. So I said, it's so easy. Just only go one floor down. Why not enter this? And I was really... Um, pleased with the presentation, and we still have our PhD students with us. And what I found at the presentation, again, I think that the atmosphere of collegiality, this, uh, the dialogue that we can observe among the experienced researchers and these emerging researcher, researchers is very important for the quality of the presentation, but not only for this, because it is like one step in our professional development. Uh, and uh, the memories from the conferences that young researchers they have, it's very impo important for the future. And I can share with you my own story. The first international uh, conference that I had the presentation was held in Lisbon, also this European Conference on Educational Research. 2001, and I was really surprised with the atmosphere. And um, after this conference, when I had a huge applause, I said, oh, it's a good place to present. Because in Poland, if I have had the presentation, usually I was very much afraid, because our researchers are very critical. And uh, at these international conferences, uh, first of all, uh, the value of uh, uh, let me say, of equity is important. It means that everyone has the same time, no matter who you are, where are you in the, uh, in the career path, but we should have the same time for our presentation. So I found yesterday uh, that the topics, there were very, ama they were amazing, high quality presentations, and uh, the presentations were based on the rigorous methodologies. And all the observations that students, they share uh, with themselves, they were very important. And uh, I think the part of the success is connected with the uh, people who chair these doctoral Mm, round tables, and I had again opportunity to work with Connor, and I, uh, he told to me that usually you have such a scheme that you can share 
positive observation. So it is a lesson how we can support each other. At least we are pedagogues, we are educators, so we should uh, do in this way. The Scotland's round tables, uh, we just finished the round tables, and uh, each year you have different topics, it depends, different themes, it depends on the interest. And uh, um, yesterday I noticed that we had 13 different themes. Among them, there were issue of well-being, there were issue of learning, of social justice, and uh, the uh, scout, oh yes, my uh, round table six about the scoutants. I said, I have to attend this because it is important for me. And what my colleagues, they said, uh, I like very much this presentation, standing on the shoulders of giants, scoutants as a hopeful space. So this was a very good experience for me. And another um, kind of the f another form of your activities, which is uh, um, also very important, it will it is the Scotland's panel, and I think it is excellent uh, idea to incorporate different voices. It is exceptional situation that we try to in we firstly we try to encourage, for example, policy makers to be with us as researchers, as educators, and to create the dialogue and share our ideas, our perception on education. But uh, for me, it's important also not to finish at the conference, but to continue this dialogue to develop the education. So the, um, what I found in uh, your organization and what you are doing, it is uh, building a culture of collaboration, which is the most important value. Uh, for uh, for any activities we would like to have. So we are closing to the end. How much time I have? 10 minutes? Maybe 15, okay. <laughs> the view from abroad, of course, still it was the view from abroad, but the view from abroad on hopes, dreams, and uh, possibilities. Uh, yesterday at this uh, um, round table six on Scotland, um, doctoral students, they pose these uh, questions. Probably you don't see this properly. Uh, it was, uh, the questions was about what um, has Scotland offered us and uh, it was about um, intercultural collaboration about the opportunity to compare practices, about the research, uh, all these things. And uh, I was thinking what I can offer you, and of course it is uh, very challenging because, uh, you know, I'm, uh, how to say, I'm not the part of the organization and I'm, I don't want to impose anything on you, but if I can have some suggestion, I will be happy if you in the future will uh, use some of them to uh, make your organization even better. So um, I think that it's good because you have such situation that, as I said, you should be proud of yourself, but it's good to um, show to broaden the perspective beyond the island. So uh, Scotland has a lot to offer, a lot to bring to the wider audience about teacher education. And uh, for example, you can pay your attention to international collaboration. Of course, I'm happy like, to be invited like a, 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 let me say, researcher from abroad, but I'm not thinking about only keynote speakers, but I think that you can uh, expand your horizons by fostering collaboration with teacher education organization beyond the island. And this could involve your partnership with uh, organ different organization in Europe or even globally. So for example, uh, you can join as an organization to World Education Research Association uh, because this association not only focus on individual members but also on the institutional members. And this type of, organ of organization um, will be very well uh, welcomed by WIRA. And uh, 
for now they have only one institution, uh, institutional member. It is uh, um, international, uh, uh, how we call this, e, um, AI, it is the organization that work on the, um, on, on the achievement and evaluation. It is based in Amsterdam. So you can consider to join them. Uh, international conferences, I know that it is a huge effort to organize at least one annual conference, but it doesn't mean that in these international conferences they should be uh, held each year, but maybe in every third year you can think about showing your achievement and uh, you know uh, and uh, join the efforts with another organization and organize such international conferences so uh, your topic uh, your topics that uh, we can observe uh, for example in this research project they will be um, they have a, a kind of the global perspective and i think it's important to show uh, them to the others. So um, this kind of the events, they could attract educators, uh, uh, they could attract also policy makers from different countries. So uh, you can organize uh, the conference with WIRA and next year this World Educational Research Association, as we know, is, uh, will, uh, will have the conference together with British Educational Research Association and WIRA is really you know, eager to organize the conference with another organization, another association. And uh, the, um, as a vice president of this asso association, I could say that the, the partnership is uh, the value for this organization and it's really worth to do it. And uh, also what is important for you, uh, which is connected with your, um, with your values, uh, it's the issue of diversity and inclusion. Scotans can focus on diversity and inclusion, not just in the context of uh, Ireland, but uh, with a global prospect, culturally responsive pedagogy. And for example, WIRA uh, within its uh, structure uh, has, uh, mm, we call this international uh, research networks. I had a uh, Mm, privilege to uh, chair these networks and each year we uh, mm, send out the calls for the networks and you can build such a networks and even though we as an organization doesn't support uh, financially the work of the networks but Professor Ian can say that uh, it is a good umbrella to develop the cooperation uh, among the researchers from different countries and also to present your own achievement. And for me, the topic of diversity and inclusion might be very important. Uh, I think that also these research exchange programs between Ireland and other countries uh, mm, can be interesting. Uh, and I mentioned about the student-teacher exchange in real and in virtual, so um, of course uh, in this case it's easier at the beginning to offer this virtual, um, we can say research exchange program or we can base on this uh, original idea uh, student teacher uh, exchange program. And uh, SCOTENS as an organization can incorporate uh, global issues in education and to research on uh, these global issues because uh, I think it is your identity when we look on your achievement. And what really I would like um, uh, to invite you to do, uh, it is the um, teacher education policy in Europe, we call this TEPE scientific network. I had the privilege to chair this network for more than six years and still I'm a member of the committee of this network and it was my idea to introduce at Brill this Tepe book series and we really welcome the contribution from uh, researchers uh, to publish at uh, this series and the series is about the key issues in teacher education uh, policy research and practice. And what is important in our series is to pay attention to comparative European perspectives, uh, to look at the teacher education as a continuum, 
I know that uh, it was in the past that at Ireland you uh, even di didn't have the induction regarding teacher education. Now the situation uh, has changed. So this continuum of teacher education, which is perceived as a teacher education at a different um, institution like universities, different higher education institution, induction and professional uh, continuous professional um, development. It is one of the, um, let me say, value that it is important for this TEPE book series. And another value, that, and we accept the proposal, uh, the proposals that try to bridge the gap between research practice and policy. So it is uh, the, the, the things that you do in your organization. And also we would like to see the proposals that focus on implications for the local, national and international policies, practices and research. And so far we uh, published two volumes. Now we will publish, uh, it's already prepared, the volume four. And we have two volumes that are um, on the way to be published and I'm so happy that uh, in volume two we have two chapters, chapter three and chapter four with the contribution from, uh, from your colleagues. So uh, keep journey together, it is my recommendation. Uh, collegiality, I think it's one of the most important value for Scotans and uh, networking and uh, Mm, working together. I think that collegiality is a glue that holds a professional association together. It creates a culture of collaboration, support, continuous learning, making association effective. And uh, give me five minutes if I can ask. Uh, coming back to the title, to the theme of this conference, I would like to finalize my presentation in some specific ways, way, hopes dreams, possibilities. Hopes are the, um, are the heartbeats of education. They drive us to seek a better future, to improve the lives of students and to uplift communities. Hopes are uh, the bedrock upon which all great educational endeavors are built. In the con context of scoutness, I see hopes in the faces of all of you uh, who are here, in the faces of educators who envision classrooms where every student thrives regardless of their background. I see hopes in the researchers who strive to uncover innovative methods that will unlock the full potential of their students. I see hopes in the policy makers who work diligently to create education system that is accessible, inclusive and transformative. Dreams. Dreams are the architects of innovation. They are the sparks that lead to the progress and change. Dreams encourage us to step outside the boundaries of the known and venture into uncharted territories. Within Scotland's community, I see dreams of pioneering new teaching methodologies that cater to the diverse needs of students. I see dreams of educational technologies that open doors to boundless possibilities for interactive and immersive learning. I see dreams of collaborative approach to teach education that transcend, transcend geographic borders and possibilities. Possibilities are the fruits of our collective hopes and dreams. They are the outcomes that emerge when we unite our efforts, share our knowledge, and to work together with dedication and passion. And in the context of scoutness, I see possibilities in the potential for cross-border collaboration that can revolutionize teacher education. I see possibilities in the chance to create a more inclusive and equitable educational landscape. I see possibilities in the research initiatives and policies that can shape the future of education in both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. So the hopes, dreams and possibilities that we cultivate here at Scotness have the power to resonate far beyond our border. And everything is possible, thankfully to you, to this organization. So please accept my sincere congratulations. I have a small present for you as well. Where is my... Oh.
I can if I can uh, give this to Noel. What I can give? I can give the book to Luis <laughs> and another one. <laughs> and this uh, this fly, uh, butterfly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.